This is the Echo Cast, episode 20. That's five months. That's insane. There's probably something wrong there, but it's around there, and that's awesome. Thank you guys very much. I'm Bond Diesel. This is going to be a pretty short part for me. Uh, I'm going to do my content update, state of the game recap, answer one viewer question, and then send you guys over to the first part of my interview with Armor 4 Core. So let's jump right in. Content update. Check me out on iTunes. Look for the Echo Cast. There should be links below. If you aren't listening to this there, please rate, review. I would very much appreciate it. Spotify podcast is still pending. The YouTube video per day challenge is going well. We're uh, nearing the halfway point. And uh, so far I'm feeling pretty good. I'm actually trying to get ahead of myself. Uh, and I realized that at the end of the month, I'm going to need to get three or four videos out ahead of time because I will be taking a vacation and will not be able to upload them. So be on the lookout. Uh, and last clip of the month is going strong. I believe at the moment, Fate from Fiction has the top clip of me throwing a heal grenade. Make sure when you're in the stream, flip things, share them, get lots of people to watch them. Helps me out funny for the rest of us and uh, you can have your chance at a gift card or bond merch your choice whoever wins state of the game recap I'm recording this on Thursday actually um, we found out there is a double HVT reward um, going from tomorrow Friday until Monday morning for us Americans uh, there's the new shield coming out Phoenix which will release on August 16th and it involves survival you need to survive a total of five hours, extract five items, and kill five hunters. The DLC will be free for uh, from the 16th for uh, a whole week, um, and the requirements will not be retroactive, so you're going to need to jump back on in there, agents. Global Event Strike will be in August, but no exact release date. I'm going to guess it's going to start on the 28th, but don't quote me on that. The pieces in this one are nomad d3 pred and banshee patch 1.8.3 does not have a release date but we know it's going to include striker balancing the running in place bug showstopper fixes a skirmish entry bug and commendation bugs that are patched up other changes are possible last the Division 2 will be at Gamescom if you're going there. They didn't answer it, but I believe it will also be at PAX West at the end of the month. The one viewer question. C.T. Cunningham, what is the verb for using a spatula? Uh, I believe it's cooking. So there's that. Okay, so I'm going to start the uh, talk I had with Armor 4 Core. We talked about Destiny, Warframe, how that uh, how those games are related to the division what's different about them and how the lessons learned from those games will hopefully impact division two this will be part one of two next week we'll have the second half please enjoy today we have armor for core a hey. a fellow now star player hey. he will be heading to pax here in a few weeks hey, how are you on? sir yeah I'm... how are you how are you <laughs> i'm good man Good, good. What about excited. you? Excited. Yeah, I'm doing well. Are you excited about the trip? Heck yes, man. Can't wait. Getting awesome. close. Less than a month away. So I wrangled Corey in here to uh, talk to me about really just kind of like the uh, uh, gameplay and loot and stuff like that. I really wanted to chat with him because um, he has extensive uh, experience with Destiny um, and definitely more experience with Warframe than I do. <laughs> um, a bit. And so I kind of wanted to talk about those two games a little bit. Get some of his opinions on those, and and some and some uh, some talk about those, and then and then kind of uh, take those ideas into talking about Division One and Division Two. So, um, what I will start with you is, so um, I'm gonna start off with a real a real barn burner for you. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What did Destiny Two get wrong in the most simple way you can explain it? Um. I think the most simple way to explain it is that 
the game is identical to um, the story they released at launch. Um, Gaul, this character uh, who you're trying to defeat at the beginning, um, we're all powerful and we have this great thing going for us. And all of a sudden he stomps in and ruins everything. And I think uh, Destiny's, or I should say Bungie's mindset going into Destiny 2 is we have this great thing. We put out two DLCs, people love it. We've had this very minimal negative feedback and we're just going to keep rocking and rolling with what we have and try to expand off of it while trying to cater to more of the casual fan base. Sure. Yeah. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. And it just kind of got too simplified. Which from my very outside perspective um, seems to go along with what I assumed. Mm. Um, I I own Destiny 2. And if you look at my (laughs) Xbox profile, um, you'll see two to three hours, I believe. I... It just never, I just couldn't do it. Now, at the same time, yeah. full disclosure, mm-hmm. there were a lot of other things going on when that game yeah. came out. I actually won it and got it for free. I remember that. Who did you and, win that off of? I uh, Diabetic Steve. Nice, and, if, yeah. and if he happens to hear this, <laughs> I'm super sorry I wasted your money. I really <laughs> meant not to. But that said, um, yeah. And, and I can say that even from someone who didn't play a, a minute of Destiny 1, but, but watched a lot of streams about it, saw a lot of people get into it, um, it, even from that perspective that, you know, kind of what you said seems apparent that they, yeah. that, that it, it, what, what's so funny in hindsight, I'll try to be as quick as I can about this mm-hmm. was, um, there were so many people in the division community from destiny and in that lead up to destiny too, there was a lot of kind of whispering and even talking from people about, uh, destiny 1.5. And there was a whole lot of no, it's not. It isn't. Shut up, you know. And yeah, then I think fair. I think you know. People can look back now and be like, okay, well, maybe a little bit, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um. And, and not. But the thing is, I'm not. I wouldn't. Would you even say it was Destiny 1.5, or would you say it wasn't even that good? Um, like, like as soon as it released. I think they're more so afraid of it being Destiny 1.5, that it's mm-hmm. so similar to Destiny 1 that people are going to call it that and just say, hey, you should have sold this as expansion. Sure. So they tried to expand off what was good and make it new to make it a sequel, but it just, sure. it, I don't know what it was that <laughs> went wrong at some point, but it just didn't work. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't work. It was a good shot, but sure. Um, it's identical to Destiny 1's release. Um, end of year one, we're coming yeah, to. Which I, I've heard that. Um, Forsaken's coming out September 4th, and it's going to fix everything, man. It's going to be a great game after that. Sure. Like I have a really good gut feeling about it. With good, all the excellent. weapon slot changes. Um, three new subclasses, which is identical to when um, Destiny uh, Taken King came out. Mm-hmm. Their third DLC, I believe. Um, so it's very similar to Taken King, and I think this is going to be the one that fixes it. The uh, so kind of moving on with that. Um, so and I I just don't know this. Um, mm-hmm. But with your experience with Destiny One and what you've had with Two, um, would you say that you prefer the PVE side of things, the PvP, or kind of a mix of both? Um, current state to what I played up to now, um, the PVE I would definitely take over it, even though it's not that <laughs> fantastic. But there's okay. a lot of issues in PvP right now with okay. uh, just UI sound, um, melee animations throwing things off or not connecting, uh, time to kill. So it's just really bad in PvP right now. Um, very similar to Division, weirdly, like how that sure. is. The PvE is great, but you know sure. PvP is lacking a little well, bit at the moment. What would you say about Destiny One? How would you say that your uh, your balance <laughs> was with that? Dude, it, it was just overall phenomenal. Like, if people haven't played Destiny 1, like, go back and play it while it's online still. Sure. It's just, it's a perfect balance. I mean, like, the worst thing about PvP was a one-shot sticky nade that you could attach to someone. Like, everything kind else Kind of like Halo, fine. the sticky. Yeah. Okay, yep. Th- that was it, man. Everything else was beautiful. I mean, you, there was a variety in weapons. Um, you could use a shotgun, a sniper, a heavy machine gun. Like, everything just ripped. Sure. Yeah. Would you say that in Destiny One, it was a lot more, um, it was a lot, uh, it was a lot easier to jump in and be like, hmm, do I want to do some PVE or PVP today instead of just like Man, really only having one option or the other? 
it, it was a tough decision every weekend, man, because, you awesome. know, like all the guys got on every weekend and they have a weekend event called Trials of Osiris, which okay. you can get exclusive gear that looked awesome. And which I've weapons. seen a lot about. Yeah. 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 And that's like, you know, where you prove your worth and, you know, everyone, you know, talked a little trash here and there. But sure. Um, sure. Then you have everybody's together for the raids. So you want the raid gear that looks awesome. And there's sure. some good weapons that work in PvP also in there. So you're like trying to balance it both if you don't have a little time or you're having a really late night. <laughs> sure. So. Um, so the the one thing, and I'll ask a similar question about Warframe, but okay. with with the PvE and Destiny, just Destiny as a whole, one or two or both or however you want to look at it or answer it, what about that, um, about its PvE game made you want to come back and do it again over and over again for whatever reason you needed to oh for destiny um, or, or or did it you know if it didn't then that's you know do it over and over again um it was because there was a lot of people that just couldn't do it um you know you meet someone nice like through a strike or you know a random pvp game be like oh nice game and you guys start talking a little bit and he's like oh yeah man i am like been playing this a little bit here and there i'm like oh do you like do king's fall raid to like get the sniper because I think it'd be like really good for you. And he'd be like, no, man, like I really don't have a squad for it. So, okay. you know, it's kind of tough to get six people. And, you know, like I talked to him, like there's LFG. And then you kind of just throw it out there like, hey, me and my guys are pretty cool. Like if you ever need help, we'll take you through it. Sure. So it was just like that overall satisfaction of like building a friendship and, <laughs> you know, just helping someone out. Then, you know, just showing them that you guys can do this, you know. So just, the the main motivation wasn't so much even... I'm sure, you know, getting gear and, and yeah. doing those things was a, was a big part of it. Yeah. But it was, was also this, the social right. aspect. So the last DLC, um, there was this raid wrath in the machine. And there was like, I think it was like a one or 2% chance to get this cosmetic ship okay. to drop out of the final boss. So like, that's what everybody kept doing it for. Mm-hmm. Like, if you weren't that lucky person, you know, like one guy in your squad would be like, I still need this. So, you know, you're running it every week on three characters. Sure. Trying to help him get that ship. So. It was just kind of like, uh, you know, have that in the loading screen to say, hey, I, you know, knocked out this raid probably a couple hundred times. <laughs> that like super exclusive, like like yeah. if Falcons Lost had a 1% chance of dropping like the coolest uh, cosmetic set that they've ever released. Yeah. People would do something. Okay. Okay. Or even in like Division 2 have that uh, backpack trophy, you know, like have sure, something, something like really, raid. really cool. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. You talked about raids. What do you think raids did for Destiny? Um, that like, what do you think Destiny would have been missing without the raids? Uh, probably a player base. To be honest, man. Okay. <laughs> um, sure, sure. To put it plain and simple, because uh, at release of uh, Destiny One, um, you pretty much did the story, and then when you were done with the story, you hit level cap, so you grind a little more f- through strikes to. Um, get to uh the power level which is kind of like gear score and division it was light level at that time okay um but once you got to that then you would just grind for like exotics you know and then um the bad thing was this is actually when i rage quit uh destiny one i got my <laughs> first exotic engram i'm so hyped i'm going back to the crypt arc click on it to you know decrypt it and it's a purple item and i'm like what the heck i just grinded so hard for this what's supposed to be an exotic item and it's legendary which is worse than exotic. So sure. I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I'm just done. I'm gonna put this down for a little bit. And then um, right after that, man, I'd say, what was it? Probably, I wanna say two months later, two or three months later, they came out with the Dark Below DLC, which introduced their first raid, uh, Crota's End. Okay. And uh, I read about it a little bit. Um, Twitch wasn't, I don't know if it was a thing or even that big back then in sure. 2014, I don't know. Sure. So, like, it's not like we were all over YouTube or Twitch watching oh, yeah. stuff. So I just heard about it from friends. Um, I think I looked up, like, one YouTube video on it, and I was like, uh, you know, this kind of looks cool. And then um, that was probably, like, a month after the DLC release, so they were coming out with a follow-up in March. And that one had no raids, so I wasn't tempted to even pick it back up at that point. I was just like, okay, like, waiting. And then finally September rolls around, and uh, my buddy Craig's like, hey, uh, Taken King's coming out. Uh, they're ra- having a new raid that's supposed to be awesome. There's like three new subclasses. They're fixing these exotics and having a bunch of new ones. Uh, loot system's going to be different. I'm like, all right, man, I'll pick it up. And then I just fell in love from there, man. Sure, sure. It was just a great experience. And that's kind of what, I mean, that's the thing I've realized when um, kind of just touching quickly on Division Two stuff, which yeah, I'll, yeah, get, go for I'll, it. I'll get more into. But yeah. 
I'm, that's kind of what I'm really hoping. You know, they they seem pretty damn confident about the raids because they made it a pretty huge part of their E3 discussion, um, stuff like that. So at the end of the day, I'm, that's why I'm hoping. You know, they they can get from that too. Is like you said, you know, the player base. You know, people sticking around, people really grinding, really people really going for it, um, and then actually fulfilling that in game. Not everyone's going to be able to do it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, because the closest thing we have to that is Stolen Signal. And yeah. and the thing with Stolen Signal is that it's definitely challenging. It definitely involves the most mechanics of any incursion or mission in the game. The yeah. biggest issue with Stolen Signal, in my opinion, is the rewards aren't really any better than doing Times Square on Legendary. You know, and, and, and there's no... So, like, what's the point? Yeah, you know, and, like... like- not even better in a sense to have like you know striker classified lock behind it like or unique yeah it's just like more so unique like imagine you could get like uh some like gold plates that they're on your armor you know sure. what i mean from if sure. you completed this for like yeah there's a challenge mode to it if you no one got downed in this room you know you earn like the knee pad like gold sure. plates to sure. your striker set like just so you could like walk around the base and be like yeah i did this you know yeah, i did it absolutely yeah, like, mm-hmm. okay um, the last thing I'll talk about with Destiny is mm-hmm. it's kind of a two-parter. One, I know a little bit, but in okay. case there's anyone else who doesn't know anything and to educate myself a little bit, what's what's the Crucible? The Crucible? Okay. Uh, the Crucible is just the generalization of PvP for Destiny. Um, it pretty much just uh, groups all the game modes under one. It's just like the menu you click on is the title for going into it, which is like, you know, pretty much uh, your quick play modes or competitive modes. Sure. Um, quick play was like pretty much, you know, like a zone control. Um, you know, uh, there's like a skirmish type of match, which is six on six up to 100. Or um, there'd be doubles or they'd have like mayhem clash, which was skirmish similar, but like your supers and your grenades would recharge super quick. Okay. And heavy ammo would be dropping everywhere, so you could like fire a lot rocket launcher every minute. Like there was like tons of fun stuff. So it was just kind of like the hub for PvP. Is that fair to yes, say? Sir. Okay. So when you were talking about the was it the trials of Osiris? Yes. Okay. So and that was a limited. That was that only on the weekends? Yes, Friday yeah. through Sunday. I okay. Believe, maybe Monday morning. I think you might have been able to still do it. So do you think that something akin to that, obviously in a different flavor, would work and slash be good for something like Division 2? Um, it could. It just mm-hmm. really depends on the play style of PvP. Which we know almost yeah. nothing about. Because <laughs> even, sure. yeah, even if you do look at the base mechanics of what we've seen so far in Division 2, obviously that's not endgame gear. You never mm-hmm. know if there's a chess piece out there that's going to allow you to neglect the, you know, med kit delay that you sure. can wear, you know, or your armor will recharge out of cover if you wear this exotic. Sure. You know, so there's stuff out there that we don't know. And um, you can't really tell yet, man. I would love yeah. to talk about it, but. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. I, I, I still think that around the time you're doing cool stuff, we'll hopefully hear a little bit about this stuff, but we'll. Uh, yeah. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. So I know, man. Praying for the Dark Zone <laughs> at uh, PAX West, but we'll see. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, okay, so with Warframe. Okay. So what would you say, just in the most general way, that you like about Warframe? Um, the thing I love most about Warframe, just from like uh, not talking about the devs or anything, just like walking into it as a casual player, mm-hmm. um, once you complete the story you don't have to go back and do that on every character. You can, you have the option to replay the mission, but the Mm -hmm. progression system is just general XP. So yeah, but there's tons of story missions to do, like a different kind of missions type trials. So, um, besides that, I would say I love the cosmetics, man. It probably has the best cosmetics I've had in game. There's so many options. (laughs) The fashion frame end game is just fantastic, man. Which I've heard a lot. Um, The, the thing for me, as someone who's jumped in and played a little bit, mm-hmm. um, is that I I really was surprised by, I guess I just, I had seen it played a bit, but I guess I haven't, hadn't paid close enough attention. But I was really expecting these, like, re- this, like, in-depth experience purely when it comes to the missions. Uh, and then I did it, mm-hmm. 
and I would jump and flip around and shoot stuff for five minutes, mm-hmm. and then I'd be done. And I yeah. just remember like looking around, being like, "Whoa, whoa!" Yeah, not in a bad way, but it just wasn't what I thought. It wasn't what I was expecting, and that's when I realized that I don't. I know with the story missions, which is something we've talked about, and and I really want to try to figure out a way to do the story missions without feeling like I have to grind for a hundred hours. But yeah, it's um, because I want to experience that. I keep hearing about all these awesome story missions and story arcs yeah. that you can go through. But from a purely jump in and play a mission, and then my feeling at the end of that mission was kind of like, I get it. It's fast. <laughs> it's it's. But I, I don't think anyone would ever come out and say that the average mission that you play through is like, that was amazing. Yeah. It's more like, that was efficient. And think- it was cool. And, I got, and, and I'm sure when you have 40 different frames... And yeah. you're able to go through each mission in a completely different way. Like, I mean, I have the base one that I started off with and a couple I got from Twitch. Like, okay. so, so my experience has been extremely limited and, and okay. I, and from watching other people play, like I, I can tell that like there's ones where you're manually shooting all the enemies. There's ones where you're chopping them up with a sword. There's mm-hmm. ones where you're like shooting all this crazy shit out of your body. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it, yeah. <laughs> so like, so I get that I've only experienced a, a very itty bitty part of it, but it definitely has made me realize that the enjoyment of that game only seems to be partially the gameplay. Yeah. And, and not think, in a bad way. Yeah. I think what a lot of people forget going into Warframe is, I don't quote me on how long ago, but it's been about five years, I think, since Warframe it came has. out. It has, yeah. So you got five years of content, man, when you're starting up that game. So technically, I think that there's like Warframe 1, 2, and 3 all reveled into 1 when you go sure. through all the content. Sure. So, I mean... The idea at the time five years ago when that game came out like that's brilliant you know what i mean sure for that first story mission but now it's just kind of underwhelming a little bit but once you break into the later um like uh what's that i think it's the war within is okay the, of the yeah. story yeah, I think, like, yeah. once you break yeah. into that um it's just like oh my god sure like, this is amazing like i suffered like getting into this point but once I hit that point, it's amazing. And that's sure. like when all the community will be like, welcome to the game. <laughs> yeah, you're you're yeah. finally playing Warframe. You're here, so, sure. Yeah, so well, that's pretty cool. Wh- which a lot of people, I, I think, fail to re- remember that for about three and a half years, that game was awful. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. It, I remember firing that up on the Xbox, and I was like, what is this? Yeah. This is real dumb. <laughs> um, which, in like, I mean, you, you kind of vaguely mentioned it, but it, it seems like, especially from watching like Skill Up and his coverage of it and stuff like that, yeah. it really seems like... If it was the exact game it is today, but it was, and this is impossible because this is how it's become so good, but if they didn't have an interactive development team mm-hmm. and CMs, mm-hmm. if it was the exact same game, it wouldn't be successful. Oh, it, it, yeah. it seems really obvious that even if the game isn't perfect, even if it's not maybe as good as sometimes it's hyped up to be, yeah. there's so much loyalty oh, and there's so much love for the people who make it. Or mm-hmm. it was uh, digital extremes, right? Yeah. Um, and so, and that's not a bad thing. Honestly, you see something in a very different way, similar yeah. with division. There's, um, there's, there's love for the people that are involved in it. Where there, there's people who I think, even like myself, that would say, like, yeah, I'm kind of bored of Division One. I, I still play it. I enjoy the, the feel of playing it. It's a game that I still enjoy. But I know I know a good chunk of the reason I still play is because of the people involved in it, the community, the people yeah. who work on it, the CMs. Like I don't, if I wasn't involved with anyone else at all, if it was just me by myself, I probably wouldn't still play it, or, ne- or not nearly as much as I do. So I've definitely seen that with uh, with Warframe, and, and I think that's that's yeah. that's a deep connection that can keep a game alive through some trials and tribulations. It's so wild, man, because it'll like. Yeah go on a dev stream and they'll be like hey this is the area we're working on yeah it's um a, yeah hey we know this melee system spin to win and um you know it could be better and simplified and just you know better for everyone and we're going to show you what we're working on this is what we got so far sure. here's the new prototypes for the weapons we're going to introduce what do you guys think like that's amazing man. no one does that you know well, what I mean? and from watching the, yeah. the i think it was no clip did a documentary on them and and from watching that um what's so interesting about that is i've seen a lot of people call out for that from games like destiny and division and stuff like mm-hmm. that and what i don't think many people realize is that digital extremes almost went under because no one wanted to publish warframe 
Yep. And so instead of, and they did a bunch of side projects uh, licensed to stay alive while they worked on Warframe. It's so crazy. And what's and and what people don't realize about it is that the reason they're able to do that is because they're their own bosses. They don't have an Ubisoft sitting over them. They don't have a an Activision sitting over them or anything oh, like yeah. that. So they can, you know, like I'm sure that there's devs on the division or mm-hmm. even destiny or any of these other games yeah. who would love to show us, you know, the, the white house and it's untextured state and just yeah. like, but, but check this out. Yeah. But you know, legal Humanity and you know, like yeah. Ubisoft's not going to let that shit happen. You know, like yeah. they, they only want to show a policy, which, and there's nothing wrong with that in a way, mm-hmm. but it just shows you the advantage that um, some, something like digital extremes has and being able to be that open because they don't have anyone to answer to. Yeah. Like they literally just answer to themselves so they can do whatever the hell they want. So it's something that uh, when I, I don't think everyone who complains about, you know, like the big time, the big triple A games being that open, I don't think they always realize that they kind of can't be. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's really, really cool to see a studio like them that's able to be. So um, that's, uh, that's cool. That's neat. Um, can you imagine if uh, Red Storm got one stream like that? Oh God, <laughs> Terry would like pass out from excitement because shot you. Uh, and shot. It's so funny to me because like every time that I, I think that they've like told Terry, he's not allowed to be on Friday streams anymore because I feel like that too. he's a very smart man. He's been in the business a long freaking time. He knows what he can say and what he can't. Yeah. When he's on that stream and his eyes hit that camera <laughs> and you can just tell he's like i want to tell you people everything i don't i think he avoids reading chat for that reason i'm he's a like, kid like, with if candy I see a question that i want oh, i might yeah. want to answer it he, you know? <laughs> even if he doesn't say anything you can just tell from his reaction sometimes like you can get you can read stuff off of him because mm-hmm. he's like a kid with candy whose mom said don't give it to anyone else this is for us and he's like <laughs> but i want to give it to everyone <laughs> So, so no, it's it's so I mean it would be cool, but that's something yeah. that um I, I've learned um to really appreciate. And even though I've kind of still figured out that Warframe's probably never gonna be a game, I'm gonna be like, Okay, I'm playing this a thousand hours. It's still a game that even when it comes to sports and stuff, I there's teams I hate. There's sports I don't care for at all, but yeah. I still respect the shit out of them. Exactly. Because I respect their game, I respect what they do, what they have to do, the work they put in. You know, I, I can respect those things without understanding them or even enjoying them. Yeah. And that's how I kind of feel about Warframe. Warframe's a game that it's I like slow paced games and that's something I've realized over the years. And 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 I think um I think saying the word slow paced game has probably never been associated with Warframe ever. Because you can't it's you know it's just and that's great you know and 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 i can tell when i watch people play it who are good at it oh my god they speed run man it's so funny i'm just like looking at it and then i start playing it and i'm like i have to crouch and then double jump and then i'm aiming and i'm floating and i'm just like what is happening and then i end the level and i'm like i'm not sure i hit any buttons on purpose for the last (laughs) five minutes i just slammed my hand against the keyboard Oh, and, then I, game, and then sure. I won <laughs> it was great but I, it's it's uh it's definitely that that deal so yeah. um well so kind of moving on with that it's um so so because of that because um of how the missions are are very quick and very efficient and and and, and that's the thing is it's, it's definitely it's obviously a grindy game Oh, but 100%. it's almost like it's so fast paced and the missions are so short and quick Mm-hmm. that it doesn't like feel grindy even in the small amount of time i've played it where yeah. i still have no idea what the hell is going on like i can still tell that it's like you could do that same mission a hundred times but mm-hmm. where um but it's but once you're good at it you can probably do it in like three minutes and yeah. so you know you can do three of them in 10 minutes you know like like where the division you know like you can get through missions quickly you know you can get down to six seven minutes on most you know some of the more grindy missions but like i mean literally half that time <laughs> you know like it just mm-hmm. it, it does impact you differently so for you what has you know when you get on what what has you coming back to warframe what has you been, being willing to grind warframe out um a lot of the missions there's uh, no level cap on the enemies so that's the end game for them like you can um 
run a resistance uh, type style of mission called defense, which I've I have done a few of those, I believe, yeah, and can, and they're endless, right? Can yep. yeah, that's what I thought. And then there's uh, survival too, which um, they drop uh, these. So pretty much you're in a room that has no oxygen, and there's these like pylons that drop that release oxygen into the air, and like they drop from enemies also. That can go on forever okay. as long as you keep that oxygen up. And the enemies just get harder and harder and harder. So people like, you know, try to do two hour runs on that. Like Jeez. people have done twenty four hour runs on oh them. You know what I mean? God. Like there's like records for those, man. Like that's wow. the end game for okay. them. Okay. Okay. So, so for that type of stuff, it's just like how far can you go? And then for the missions you were talking about before, it's how fast can you get them done? Okay. You know? Okay. So Which there makes is, sense. There yeah. is a slower paced aspect to the game, but not from the actual story, probably. I'll tell you what the thing yeah. that gets that that changed for me is I tried to play it on I had it on Xbox I played it for about ten minutes and never touched it again. Oh yeah, uh, it's just that's a game that honestly, if there's people who play that extremely seriously on console, then all the power to them mm-hmm. because the the aiming and the agility, like the movement required in that game, even yeah. at the extremely low 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 level I was playing at. I can't even imagine how you'd play that game on console. And so oh, it's tough, man. <laughs> I have a shit ton of respect for people who can and enjoy it Oh, yeah. because it doesn't seem, I, the one thing I could see the movement being maybe a little bit more uh, satisfying on a controller, um, which is something I would actually say about uh, division as well. I, I enjoy playing on PC. I enjoy being able to aim at <laughs> someone's eyeball. That's mm-hmm. fun. But I actually don't enjoy the actual movement on PC. Um, even though I'm very familiar with PC, I've been playing since I was a child. Um, I feel very comfortable in in, in games on and in, in first person shooters and stuff. But I've definitely found so. So yeah, the fact that anyone can play that game on console just blows my mind because I know people do and I know people do it very well. And yeah. I have no idea. It, that's insane. So yeah, um, that's cool. Okay. The 100%. um. So, and okay, so I'm going to ask about PvP in Warframe, and okay. I'll give you my understanding of it because it may not be accurate at this point. Um, my understanding of PvP in Warframe comes from Skill Up's video okay. months ago, and where he basically said that they kind of touch it here and there, but for the most part, just said, ah, eh, there's no way we can balance this. Here it is, but it's definitely not going to be the focus. Would would you say that's accurate, or am I wrong about that um, outlook I've, on it? I've honestly had zero interest in playing Warframe <laughs> okay. PvP. Okay. I haven't okay. touched it just from the few videos I did watch on it, and it's just not for me, man. Not my style. Sure, sure. And <laughs> too much uh, in air ability, you know. Like I want yes. my feet on the ground more than absolutely, up in absolutely. The air. Yeah. Um, and which is interesting to me because um. You know, especially in Division, you hear a lot of talk about... And now Division's different because um, mm-hmm. Division, from the outset of that game being even talked about, the DZ was a thing. Yes. And PvP was a thing that was, at one point, really the main promotion of the game. Um, yeah. Which, in hindsight, was probably a mistake because anyone who knows anything about video games and has played PvP games... Um, I, I hope that there's no one out there who thinks that Division's a, a serious PvP game. Mm. It, it, it just isn't. It's There's no. nothing about the design of Division that says it's an actual serious PvP game. No. That, that said, I think there's people who think that games like that can't survive without that. A game like Destiny can't survive without its PvP. Division can't survive without it. And I feel like even though it's a very different game, I think Warframe has kind of proven... It can. You just have to take the PVE really seriously and yep. give them an impossible amount of shit to do. Yeah, because like even the like crit chance system in um, Warframe is super complex. Like I just learned okay. this maybe a couple weeks ago. Like, all right, so you have yellow crit numbers that you hit. Okay. Once you break a hundred percent crit chance, and your damage multiplier goes, and your crit damage multiplier goes up past a certain point, they'll turn into orange and red numbers. Okay. So there's three different kinds of crits that you can oh, wow. hit. Yeah, okay. so it gets super end up, man. Like, and the builds are just insane. You can invest so much time just grinding for like the one mod you want to complete a build. Sure, sure. You know? And that and that's a whole world of mods and shit like that. Honestly, mm-hmm. in the in the relatively low hours I've gotten to play of that, I still haven't once placed a mod on my own. I've used <laughs> the auto mod system now, and I suspect that the level I'm playing at, that's probably fine. 
Yeah. Um, because I probably don't have any mods there. That now I will say I did start paying a little more attention and realizing that the way I was playing the game. Um, so what actually got me to play it was one getting to play on PC just because it makes more sense to me, mm-hmm. and two is when I ran through the character, I used a bow. Oh, you wild! That's awesome, man. <laughs> and that bow is one of the most is is one of the most satisfying things I've ever done in a video game. Oh man! Yeah. E- even though I don't, I, I've made it very clear that I don't think I can really super get into Warframe. Yeah, I can super get into tagging people with that bow against the wall. That is so fun. Yeah, that it's it's insane. So I will say that it i get it <laughs> i get that that well, that for sure was a thing that and, and i assume that everyone has their own version of that that yeah. there's something about you know you know whatever they've picked out and, and i guess with warframe it seems like it's just so huge and complex it has you know what the bow is for me they have something like that for everyone oh yeah definitely um, man. which is super cool yeah speaking of bows though i'm super excited for destiny to get bow soon i saw that i saw <laughs> that absolutely <laughs> the uh yeah no that actually yeah. did look pretty legit too yeah. the animation they have for it is really cool oh yeah I can't um, wait, man. but yeah that that's a thing that um i think is funny um because there's i've had some conversations with people where they're like you know you know, Warframe has done this and this and so this so well, which I totally agree. Uh-huh. But I have like pointed out, but at the same time, they did just kind of basically take some parts of the game and just abandon them. But yes. that is smart. They're transparent about it, though. They're really, well, hey, they're, we're they're, abandoning this, guys. We don't think it's a good idea. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, <laughs> like, sure. They're transparent yeah. and yeah. They, they just, and I think that probably goes along again, like what I said before about they're their own bosses. Yep. So if whoever the guy is who's who's in charge of everything, He's probably down the hall, yep, in an office, yep, not in you know Paris. Where you can reach him directly, or, you know yeah, I mean? you know, yeah. like 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 there's not like as much bureaucracy, so they can literally someone you know one of the lead designers can just pop into his office and be like, "Hey, this sucks. Can we stop doing it?" And mm-hmm. he can be like, "You're right. That does suck. Just don't worry about it." And they just move on. You know, build the planes of Eidolon. Just do that instead. You know, yeah. like. You know, which is is pretty damn cool. So I and again, that kind of comes down to yeah. my. While I may not enjoy it as much as some others may, I definitely respect the shit out of it because they get yeah. to do that. And you know, he has more of a passion for that game than like a Ubisoft CEO for like Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. You know sure, what I mean? who I'm sure one, loves it. But, that dude's yeah. been there since the beginning. Definitely, and I'm sure he loves those franchises, but, but in a different way because he's probably not programming it when he needs mm, to. You know, he's not as personable with it. You sure. know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. That's it's because it can't title. be, you mm-hmm. know, like he's he's in charge of 30 studios. Oh, yeah. You know, man. he's be... not in charge of one game. You exactly. know, it's and it's and, and really either way, it's not a bad thing. No, it's not. It's, at not all. A, it's not anything against or for DE. It's not anything against Yevas, you know, it's just completely different situations. Oh, yeah, because he uh, built his company up. So big man's perspective, 100 yeah. percent. For know? sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, do you think it's possible for a Activision, for a Ubisoft, for a EA to do what Digital Extremes has done with Warframe? Uh, 100%, man. Really? I, I think so. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you're wrong. Sure. I think there's a lot wrong with not being transparent about it. And even, like, throughout the time of Destiny 2, like, nothing against Steve like oh he's a great dude and everything but like i didn't see anything when all these complaints were coming out like you know like at Deej, like how come hand cannons are four shots now instead of three sure um how come this mod you know the weapons are working like this now and they're all reskins like what's going on i thought we were going to get new exotics and new weapons uh but these are reskins like nothing but now like someone will comment on his post dude and, like nine times out of ten i receive a reply a reply from it from him and be like hey what can i do you know so it's weird how from launch to now I've seen like the difference of him on Twitter from a social sure. standpoint. I mean, he could be different on Reddit, Facebook, you know, like, I don't know, but just from a Twitter standpoint, just seeing the difference is really cool to see those guys get a little more transparent with things. Well, cause I'm sure that some of the pressure has come off, you know, I mm-hmm. mean, I think anyone who paid attention kind of knows what those guys like have gone through, you know, mm-hmm. like, like that's kind of a, a stance I've always taken with division and that, and I think it's misconstrued sometimes. I think that when people see me 
you know, maybe not jump on the complain train about something yeah. um, that they think that, oh, he's just being a shill. He's just, you know, star player. He's getting his check, you know. Yeah. Like, it's 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 not that. It's that um, I am often in the exact same position that they are mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to things at my job that I have to give people news they don't want to hear. Yeah. Or I have to put out a system that isn't great. And I know it's not great. But it's what we got for now, and I have to put it out. Yeah. We need something, yeah. and we'll try to make it better. And and so, I and especially the CMs because they're the face of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can so often, at least I can tell, that when they're giving us news, especially bad news, they don't want to give it to us. <laughs> There's stuff that they want to tell us, maybe their own opinions, maybe yeah. information they're just not allowed to share. Like it's there's always so much more to it. And and what's and so I think that there really has to be some way of treating them like they're people, you know. St- still, they aren't just yeah. faces on a screen. That said, man. I also totally understand people's opinions that I don't care. I paid for a thing. I want it to work. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Also, the problem is I don't think you can go all the way on either way on that. I think you need to find a balance of exactly expecting them to do what they're supposed to do but also being realistic in what they can do. Yeah, exactly. If you have something like in works or ready to launch in a couple months, kind of hint towards it and, you know, say, Hey, we're working on it. We're doing this. You know what I mean? Sure. But if you have no plan, like, yeah, be silent for a little bit, put a game plan together, you know, get some feedback and then come forward. Once you guys do have a plan, you know, sure. You can't be transparent on like 24 seven. I understand that. Yeah. And, and I think that's a thing that gets lost on people sometimes with, with all these games. But obviously, I've seen it the most with Division because that's the game I focus on the most. But I've seen it with the other ones too, with Destiny and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's neat. So my my last question about Warframe, and, 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 I, and I mean this in a very neutral way <laughs> when right. I ask this, but do you think it's overhyped? Um, it depends who, I mean, are you talking from like a, like community diehard perspective or like what perspective are we talking about? So the perspective I would give would be someone like me who I would say, and like I've said, I respect it. I've dabbled in it. Mm -hmm. It's cool. It's just not really my thing. My thing is with, with Warframe is that there's been so much press about it over Mm -hmm. the last year or so. And so much talk about how amazing it is. That for me, it's kind of like, and good lord, I'm. This may end my podcast when I'm about to say this. <laughs> I heard people talk about Black Panther for okay. months about how oh, amazing it was. <laughs> it was so <laughs> good. Was like, what? It was so amazing. It was the best Marvel movie they've made. Blah 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 blah. And so I'm like, sweet. I like the Marvel movies. I'm not super into them, but I I've watched every one of them. I enjoy them. And my wife and I rented it at home sat and watched it on the couch and mm-hmm. at the end of it i was like i mean that was good man come on but but <laughs> but it it was like ant-man like i you know like i feel that with ant-man i, I feel you on that one but it it, I, it, I, it wasn't iron man it i i, I mean iron man is like the og right like yeah. of that series so yeah. it's gonna be hard to beat that i understand that yeah. i personally love guardians of the galaxy mostly because of the soundtrack and i mm-hmm. really like chris pratt but like i like the style of those movies yeah um and to me like black panther was just kind of cheesy for me for me personally okay it was good I, it was awesome some of the spectacles yeah. were amazing but it just didn't really but the problem was is that for me and i've had this happen with other movies and uh bands and music and all in games is kind of what i'm getting at here mm-hmm. is that it got so hyped up for me i heard so much about it that i think it was impossible for black panther to live up to its own expectations for me oh. 100 percent. because i was under the impression i was gonna like jump in front of a car after it because my life couldn't get any better you know like you know like like it just in and when and for me i think warframe i'm afraid it may be a victim to that a little bit i will say for me a little bit that i went into it thinking like oh my god this is gonna be the best experience i've ever had and Mm -hmm. i came out of it like that was pretty cool but like and, and I'm sure if I put in another 20, 30 hours, I would be like, oh, I get it now for sure. That's yeah. I just don't know if I can, but I the th- simple, that's that's the perspective I'm coming from. Yeah, I think the simplest way to explain that to someone um, going into Warframe 
Uh, if you're not willing to reach out to a community member or watch some okay. YouTube videos, you're just not going to learn it. <laughs> like, there's no tutorials. Sure, sure. And you're gonna... Which I just saw, um, there was a video today about No Man's Sky that Skill Up did, and he said mm -hmm. that, he basically said that No Man's Sky explains even less than Warframe. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, because even in my fairly limited time with Warframe, I can totally tell they don't explain shit. Mm -hmm. And I think it's on purpose. I think they mm -hmm. want you to figure it out. But um, I'll say I bought No Man's Sky the day it released years ago. I had it for one hour and I returned it. <laughs> I bought it again last week and returned it 25 minutes later. I saw that one coming, man. I did yeah. not buy that game. I was like, yeah. no, not well, happening. So, <laughs> and, and, and if, you, if you check out the, the video I keep referencing from Skill Up, it's, he, he makes actually a pretty good point about it. He's like, there's going to be people who are going to love this game. This game is what it said it was going to be years ago. They've done it. They've, mm -hmm. they've done it. It's amazing. He's like, it's a great game, but not for me. And I don't think it's going to be for a lot of people. So, okay. uh, which I can appreciate that perspective. That's kind of what I'm saying about Warframe. Yeah. I can tell Warframe is an insanely awesome game, yeah. but it's not for me. It's how I would describe Ghost, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't really care for that game. I don't think it's a Ghost Recon game, but I can totally tell from my own experiences with it. And especially people who do love it, that it's a great game. And it's just not for me. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so, so, but the hype train is a thing that I think is really interesting with, with games like Warframe and, and I'm, and it could very well happen with division two. The same thing could happen where it, it could get hyped. So beyond belief, that's why I'm a little worried yeah. um, that it could get so hyped beyond belief that people could just be like, wait, well, this wasn't as good as we thought it was going to be, you know? So yeah. that, that, and, but I think, you know, that's a destiny two problem. You know, I think they suffered from that as well that, oh, you know, yeah. everyone expected one thing. And, and one thing that I think is really interesting in gaming communities, uh, gamers often hype things up that no one even said that they should be hyped about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see it with division all the time that though, like when 1.8 came out, I remember specifically, there were people who were like, man, they might release central park. They might, oh, they might so surprise much. they might surprise us with that and i was just like yo dudes don't they, they never said that so yeah if if central park comes out or if 1.8 comes out and central park isn't there sure it's a bummer but you can't be mad because they never said that and then exactly. it, and then 1.8 came out and people were like where the hell is central park you know like um another one is when they make these changes like they're about to do the striker people yeah. will come up with admittedly a great idea on how to fix it and they'll post a video about it. They'll post it on the forums and on Reddit and on Twitter. And then the patch will come out and they'll, they'll, they'll treat it some other way. And those people will be like personally offended. They'll be like, but I had this great idea and I may even agree with them. Yeah, that was yeah. a great idea, but they never set an expectation that they were going to fix that for you. That's um, when the yeah. PTS for 1.8, uh, 1.8, I believe when they tested striker and Predmark and all those and people had all these amazing ideas on how to fix them mm -hmm. and then they didn't do it, but they never said they would, no. you know, like it was kind of that same thing. So, uh, did think, they, you know, they didn't balance anything at one point at all. Okay. I thought they like skipped it for some reason. Like I can't remember a hundred percent on that one. So the thing that I've tried to remind people of yeah. is that the PTS is not a development test. It, it, it's a live test. Mm -hmm. It's a, this is what you're going to get. Let's see if there's anything like game breaking entirely, like where you can't turn it on. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that's what you're getting. And we'll it's adjust. As we need to. It is. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's, and I, and I think people, um, I think when they removed the seeker set back in like 1.7 or whatever, mm -hmm. I think people were like, Oh no, they can change big stuff. It's not just a stress test. And, and I think that maybe removing a gear set from the game maybe isn't as complicated as yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm not a developer. I don't know. Like, you know, yeah. like, but like, I suspect removing something that general is probably a lot easier than balancing. It would have to be something huge, like Nomad, you get unlimited procs. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure, and then sure. they'd have to be like, all right, we got to pull the plug on this one, guys. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that first half of my conversation with Armor 4 Core. I will um, be posting the second half next week. As for uh, what I have left here, if you want to ask questions for the podcast or have topics that you'd like me to cover, let me know on Twitter or my Discord. If you want to check out the, uh, the home of the Echo Cast to look at the Division 2 hub and uh, check out um, the, the Discord is also the home of that. 
Uh, if you want to find me on Twitter, YouTube, or Twitch, I am Bond Diesel. Instagram, I am Bond Diesel underscore Twitch. If you want to support me via Patreon, the link is below. That's why I've got it. This was Bond Diesel, and until next time. Oh,